and welcome to KS Vlogs Reviews. It has been a really long time since we have done a review. It really has. But think, we're back. <laughs> we are back with a review. And this was a requested uh, review by Geek on Your Sleeve. But she requested that we do some reviews on the Hayao Miyazaki movies. And we just happen to be complete and utterly obsessed with Hayao Miyazaki. So it definitely works out for us. Yeah, and we hope it works out for you all too. So we hope you enjoy. Yes. So the first movie that we decided to review just happened to be Howl's Moving Castle. A wonderful, wonderful movie by Hayao Miyazaki and the Ghibli team. And it's basically about a young girl who ends up learning to have confidence in herself and learning that she ha is a strong woman and she helps save a young wizard and her newfound family so that they can all live in peace and basically ends up stopping a war. Right. And as with absolutely all Ghibli movies, and this is no exception, the no. artwork in this movie is unbelievable. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. I want to say is his movies, are they all watercolor? No, not no. all watercolor. Um, one particular one that is watercolor, though, is Ponyo, but this one is not. If I remember right, this is actually a little bit more mixed media, okay. but um, this one's not in particular watercolor. We can be corrected, however. I know I'm not an expert. If we're just mm -hmm. talking about the artwork, mm -hmm. the artwork in here, like we said, is phenomenal. You go from lush cities that is like the industrial age area. You have mm -hmm. a lot of steam engine power, and then... There's magic machines as well, in a way. Of course, the house, which yeah. is pretty awesome in itself. And Calcifer. Yes, Calcifer, who is the <laughs> fire demon who runs the entire house. So we might want to get back to just, let's go into character development. Yeah. Um, we have Sophie. Yes, Sophie. She is our young heroine who does not even know that she is a hero. Um, she is the eldest daughter of her family. And she is the eldest daughter of three sisters. One is her biological sister. Mm -hmm. The youngest sister is actually her stepsister. And you don't even know any of this extra information unless you read the actual novel of Howl's Moving Castle, which was by Diana... Diana Jones. Yes. It was written by Diana Jones. And there's actually a lot of mythical European fairy tale involvement inside of Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, you can tell that it was very much European inspired. Yes. She goes from a very low confident young woman that just runs a hat shop into a strong willed woman who's willing to fight for her love at the very end. Right. So and it is really the her character development is pretty progressive. Yeah. And she does go yeah. From meek to strong. Yeah. And that's something that's pretty common in a lot of Hayao Miyazaki movies, and to be quite honest, Ghibli in general. Yeah. Is that there are a lot of female leads, really strong female leads. I mean, there are a few males in there, so, you know, Ghibli fans don't jump on me down in the comments, but there is a big, big trend for strong female leads yeah. in Ghibli movies. Mm hmm. Yep, that is true. Now, one of the main reasons that Sophie has to become strong, however, is that she's been placed a curse upon her, which turns her into an old woman. Mm -hmm. When she's not being her true, true to self. herself. Mm -hmm. If she's true to herself, she'll actually become young. But, eh, sometimes it's hard for people to be true to themselves. And, and that's a lesson that so Sophie progressively learns. Yeah. Through the help of Hal, who is... A wizard. Yes. A much more ancient wizard than you might believe, I believe, right? I think so. I'd have to read the book. He's been around for a yeah. while, I mean, because obviously he has not aged when the Witch of the Waste has. Right. That's true. But he was able to keep his youth somehow, I'm guessing yeah. due to his spell with Calcifer, which is the fire demon. Um, Hal and Calcifer are basically a They're duo. They're bonded that, somehow. Yeah. You'll have to watch the movie. Yes. Watch the movie. There's a big spoiler there if I say too much, but those two are very much connected. And Hal is a very powerful wizard. He can basically do anything he really wants. And he takes many f different forms and different appearances. Sometimes yeah. he has blonde hair, sometimes he has red, sometimes it's black, and sometimes he is even a really gigantic, huge feathered bird. Yeah. Then you have Calcifer, of course. Mm -hmm. 
My favorite. <laughs> Calcifer <laughs> is a fire demon who runs the entire castle. He can move it anywhere he wants. He even runs the hot water for the bath. He's really quite grumpy, and I love grumpy characters, maybe because I am too. Yeah, uh, that's okay. I love her still. I still love her. <laughs> so yeah, Kelsifer is one of my favorites as well. Oh. And then we have the young apprentice, who is Hal's apprentice. He's pretty fun too. Yeah. He doesn't really have a lot of involvement in the story. I actually don't really remember his name at the moment. Marco. Marco. That's it. Mm -hmm. Marco. Marco is his name. Mm -hmm. I forgot it there for a second. Oh well. Mm -hmm. Marco's pretty fun. Yeah. He doesn't really do a whole lot, but he's learning. Mm -hmm. He's a young wizard. I almost think of him, and this is not canon, this is not anything to actually do with the story, but I almost think of him as almost like Hal's adopted son. Yeah, in a lot of <laughs> ways. almost like Hal's raising him. Well, yeah. And a lot of old-time European settings and cultures, when you were taking on an apprentice, sometimes they were living with you. So you were kind of were raising your own child then mm -hmm. at that point. So for that cultural aspect, it's really... Pretty accurate. Yeah. Well, you have Turniphead. Let's mm -hmm. talk about yeah. him. We probably shouldn't give away who Turniphead actually is. Well, no. you got to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Turniphead is a scarecrow. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Turniphead is not what he appears to be. So, but he's very helpful, and he's, he's willing to magical himself. Well, yeah, and he's he wants to help Sophie at all means. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Witch of the Waste. Oh, yeah. one of our villains, mm -hmm. who is madly in love with Hal. She's quite the odd villain because it's not that she's so evil; it's just she's. So annoying. And very, how, how do you say it? She wants Hal all to herself. No and matter that's it. what. Yeah. Hence the reason she placed a curse on Sophie. Sophie. So. I like that. her dog. Wait, it's not her dog. It's not her dog. It's um, Solomon's dog. Solomon's dog. Yeah. I like Solomon's dog. Yeah. yeah. Now, Solomon is the teacher of Hal. Hal had many different masters, but one of them was Solomon. Mm -hmm. And Solomon has this particular little dog that... That Sophie at one point actually thinks is Hal, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it, it's funny. you got to see that part. But even the little dog can fly with his ears. He's got big, gigantic, like, Snoopy <laughs> ears, and he can fly with them a little bit and glide. And, and he's really lazy. Yes. Yeah, it works. You sure they call me? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I have to edit that part out, won't we? <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> She's mean to me. Quite honestly, for one of my all-time favorite animation movies, I'm a little bit biased, so I'm going to rank it like a 4.5 out of 5. Oh it's my gosh. It's one of my favorites. I actually am going to go ahead and give it a 5. I, I just love this movie. Yeah. I mean, it is adventure. It is romance. It has beautiful cinematics in animation. Yep. It is a beautiful story that is well written. Yeah. I think it's a 5 out of 5. Yeah. The only reason that I'm going a little lower... Just because I'm like a diehard fan for details and I want to know more. And like I said, the only reason I know about that extra detail about Sophie being the eldest sister is because I read part of the book. Just a little segment of summary. In Hastings. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I read like five pages and I knew more, in, knew, knew more details involved in that movie at all. And now, of course, you can't list out all the details in a movie. I get this. But I love those details, so yes, I'm going to read that book soon. And there actually is two sequels. Oh. Yeah, speaking of the books, we made a little order on Amazon. We have them. We have all three of the books. So the first book is, of obviously, Howl's Moving Castle. Yep. And um, I'm really excited about this because, as he said, he looked through it a little bit, and there seems to be a lot of things in the book that the movie left out. Yeah. Um, one of the things that is in this particular edition is an interview with Diane Wynne Jones. Please, someone correct me if I'm saying that wrong. I'm pretty sure I've got that middle name right, Wynne. But she actually watched the movie, and unlike a lot of writers who tend to not like the movie, at that adaptation adaptation of their their work she really enjoyed Hayao Miyazaki's 
rendition. And she said she has several figures of Hal and Sophie and Calcifer mm -hmm. in her house. She actually has a whole figure of Calcifer sitting in her fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she said the one thing that she had pictured differently was in her head, obviously this particular drawing was done after the movie because this is a newer edition. This is a new edition of the book. But she said her version of the castle originally did not have legs. That in her head it hovered like a hovercraft. But that she was okay. She did like Hayomi's Hayao Miyazaki's version, version yeah. of her castle. Yeah. Then the second thing that came out was actually Castle in the Air, which is a companion to Howl's Moving Castle. It came out before the sequel. Oh, okay. And it almost... I mean, we're going to probably do end up doing full-on book reviews of these eventually. Yeah. But it kind of seemed a little bit like Aladdin. I have no idea. I've not really touched this one. Um, the back of it says, Young merchant Abdullah leads a humble life, or he did until a stranger sold him a threadbare and disagreeable magic carpet. Now Abdullah is caught in the middle of his grand daydreams, waking one night in a luxurious garden. He meets and falls instantly in love with the beautiful and clever flower in the night. But a wicked djinn sweeps the princess away right before Abdullah's eyes, leaving the young man no choice but to follow. This is no ordinary quest, however, for the flower in the night isn't all the djinn has stolen. Abdullah will have the so-called help of the cantankerous carpet, a cranky genie in a bottle, a dishonest soldier, and a very opinionated black cat. Will this motley crew be able to find the djinn's mysterious dwelling and rescue a castle full of princesses? And I actually looked how and Sophie are in the book. So okay. I don't know how it ties in whatsoever, because reading from the back of the description, you would not think it did. But somehow they make it in here. Okay, cool. And then we have a third book. Which is the one they actually claim is the sequel. And it is called House of Many Ways. And I'll read you its description as well. It says, when Charmaine Baker agreed to look after her great uncle's house, she thought she was getting blissful parent free time to read. She didn't realize that the house bent space and time, and she did not expect to become responsible for an extremely magical stray dog and a muddled young apprentice wizard. <laughs> now somehow she's been targeted by a terrifying creature called a Lubbock, too, and became central to the king's urgent search for the fabled elf gift that will save the country. The king is so desperate to find the elf gift, he's calling in an intimidating sorceress named Sophie to help. And where Sophie is, the great wizard Howe and fire demon Calcifer won't be far behind. How did respectable Charmaine end up in such a mess and how will she get herself out of it? So we know that somehow from book one that the movie's based on to book three they end up going to what's like a Aladdin sort of situation all the way to a scenario where Sophie's yeah. a wizard? A sorceress? A sorceress? Whatever. Yeah. So we'll have to find out. Yeah. And you all will find out along with us. So that's pretty cool. Really excited to read those. Had absolutely no idea that the show was based on a book until you found it in Hastings. Yep. And then we did a little bit blah blah blah. We did a little <laughs> bit more digging and found out that there was not only one book but three. Yes. So really can't wait to read those. Those will be nice. Mm -hmm. So those will be on the radar pretty soon. We have one more item from Howl's Moving Castle. And we've actually had this item for quite a while now, at least a year. Yeah, something like that. And that is the, the art. art of Howl's Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. This was actually a Scott purchase. The books were mine, but well. I couldn't help it. Yeah. I had to have it. And it has really gorgeous really artwork. Pretty art. It was inspired, but inspired the movie, I believe, right? This was his, like, working. Yeah. This is a lot of the working concept art that they actually did when they were making the mm -hmm. movie. And it actually shows, like, his storyboarding. Mm-hmm. Really nice. And, and what's really the nice about concepts. this book is that at the very end they actually have like the actual script when yes. they're writing out the dialogue. And it has the final script actually. Yeah. So here's the actual script that was in the movie. So laid out in script form, so it's pretty cool. Yep. There's also character concepts in here. It's just all around a really beautiful book. 
really good so, for artists to take a look at and yeah. trying to learn a style. And also for geek coffee table work. All in all, four out of uh, four point five out of five for me, and a five out of five for me. So. Watch the movie, give it your own rating, and send us your comments about it. Yeah, let us know what you think of How's the Moving Castle. So, see you next time, and until then, like, share, and subscribe. subscribe.